The rule of law. That's the big defense for Christian Porter over these rape allegations. The argument goes, let the rule of law prevail, presumption of innocence, no inquiry into Porter, let the rule of law prevail. Because the law can't do anything, let's forget about it. Now, of course, they could hold inquiries, but this defense, which is being prosecuted in the Murdoch Press, News Corp, and in Nine Entertainment, principally, no doubt on Seven, Kerry Stokes' Seven, West Media as well. The rule of law is a furphy because Christian Porter is a serial breaker of the law. We've already established that he's broken the law three times, three consecutive years, when it comes to what are called NSIs, national security disclosures, that you have to make as Attorney General in regards of who you're prosecuting. Christian Porter has failed to do this. The Attorney General, the top lawman in the country, is a serial breaker of the laws of the Commonwealth. Now, on top of that, there's a word that applies to government people, bureaucrats, politicians, and so on, when they're suing people. They are required to be, in the court system, model litigants. That's the word. When you hear model litigants, it's not fashion model suing people, it's a person required to be a model of propriety with the law. No aggressive legal tactics, no strategic litigation, no using the law to suppress things and so on. Christian Porter is not a model litigant. He's been prosecuting and holding secret trials of whistleblowers. He's been prosecuting people who have done the right thing, who've put their own career, their livelihoods, their safety on the line for the public interest. First of all, David McBride, the SAS soldier, the lawyer for the army who revealed the Afghan war atrocities by Australian troops. These sort of things need to be addressed. But what does the government do? Christian Porter leads the charge prosecuting David McBride, who faces decades in jail, potentially for doing the right thing. The most celebrated case, of course, is the case of Witness K and Bernard Collieri. Bernard Cleary is now being prosecuted in secret trials with all sorts of abuses of legal process and of natural justice as well for defending the whistleblower who revealed that Australian spies were bugging officers in East Timor when there were negotiations going on between the East Timorese and the Australian government over oil and gas leases. We're talking billions of dollars in assets. And either side, East Timor as a new country, was having a debate with Australia about how they should divvy up this acreage, these assets. East Timor being a poor country, Australia being one of the richest in the world. We were bugging their officers. The whistleblower blew the whistle. Bernard Cleary defended him. And now his life has been completely torn apart by relentless, inexorable prosecution by Christian Porter and the government. There's a denial of natural justice. There's a denial of real justice because justice should be seen to be done. This, these, these trials should be had in open court, but instead they're being held in secret. The final abuse of process was when Christian Porter interceded to block information that the Auditor General wanted to come out in the public interest about a defense deal with Tarles which is a French multinational arms dealer or weapons manufacturer. It was in relation to the Hawkeye vehicles, to a huge billion dollar spend on arms. It was called a brazen attack on parliament and the public interest. He was roundly condemned for this because the parliamentary committee that has oversight into Porter's office, oversight of the attorney general himself, they were so concerned about Porter's irregular use of his special powers to stop transparency that they launched an inquiry into it, which found a brazen attack on parliament and the public interest. These are just three blatant cases of abuse of process, of abuse of the office itself. In the case of RoboDebt, in which Attorney General Christian Porter was a player, he had a hand in this. There was a presumption of guilt, not innocence. Is this not an abuse of process? to deem that a whole lot of Australia's poorest people 
are guilty and therefore should be slapped with notices out of the blue, causing, in some cases, people to take their own lives. That is the government presuming guilt, not innocence. That is not the rule of law. So when Christian Porter and his supporters in the media and politics say that we must adhere to the rule of law, then clearly Christian Porter should stand aside because Christian Porter himself, as the top lawman in the country, has failed in his duties. Like, comment or share this video if you'd like to see an independent inquiry into Christian Porter. It's really important at this time when the government has just forced payments out of Google into News Corporation and Nine Entertainment and others that Australia supports independent journalism. We don't have these subsidised income streams. So thank you to the people already who've supported us on Patreon and who bought the merch.